Hey, this is Sasha Evdikov, founder of TradersFly.com and InvestingHelpDesk.com, where I share with you some insight about trading, investing, and the stock market. Now, at InvestingHelpDesk.com, I've created this website so I can share with you some common questions that people ask me. And this week's question is, how can you tell when volume is drying up for a breakout or a breakdown? So it's more of a technical analysis question. First, before I share, share with you some examples, Examples on the charts, let's take a look at what volume tells you. Well, it tells you the energy of the stock move. And if a move is real, the more volume a stock has on a break, the more likely it is to stay above that break. So let's go to the charts and see this in real world examples and situations. So here, if we look at Tesla, you can see that we're looking at a chart that's a monthly chart for the time being. If I put it into a weekly chart and zoom out, you can see the volume here towards the bottom. And as I stretch it, you'll be able to see the overall volume picture of how that looks. So when I Go back from a weekly to a monthly chart. You can see the volume bars start shifting. So looking at this between the weekly and the monthly, you'll see that the picture of the volume starts to change. Now here looking at Tesla, you can see initially we had a uh, consolidation pattern or an accumulation phase right around the 2012 to 2013. And then when volume comes in, what happened? It was buying volume. Okay, So then what does the stock do? It breaks those levels on huge green volume. So you can see that the volume starts to pick up. And if we zoom in, You'll be able to see that real closely. So you can see the volume here. We have a 20-day moving average. Why 20? 20 trading days in a month, excluding the weekends and so forth. So you can see the volume starts to really pick up right here and more buying comes in. So the stock continues to explode higher. After a certain period where the stock price gets overextended, that stock is ready to do what? pull back. We know stocks don't go straight up. So when is that pullback coming? Then once it starts coming, what happens? Well, volume starts picking up to the downside. And you can see that, you know, initially right here in May and June, we have positive volume. But if we look at right here, you're starting to get a few weeks of bearish and negative volume. Now you do still have positive bullish volume in August and September. But right here, right around September, October, you see a few more uh, bearish spikes, which means selling is starting to pick up. So that's why the stock is starting to break down a little bit. And you see those higher spikes above that average. It's really the higher spikes right there above the uh, recent average volume in the green bars. So if you start looking at this, you can see it, it pulls back and then the stock builds for the next leg higher. So what do we get before we get that next leg higher? Well, if you take a look at it, you get this drying effect of volume. You can see the volume dries out right there, right around this level. We dry out and then the stock builds for the next leg higher, okay? And volume picks up and accelerates. Now, if you're good at reading chart patterns, this is an A to B, B to C, and C to D pattern, okay? Once an A, B, C, D pattern is complete, something new happens. And in this case, you can see, okay, let's take a look, zoom back out. You see we have that A, B, C, D pattern all the way to the left, and now we get sideways action, and then what happens next? Well, now we're moving sideways. We could potentially move higher, uh, or we could break down. It just depends where this range comes in play. Now, if we go back to the weekly, you can see these ABCD patterns that happen as well in a shorter term patterns. So here you have kind of a A to B, B to C, C to D. So what happens here is when we have these little levels that the stock tried to get into for a power higher but couldn't do it, how do you know it's not going to do it? Or what's the chance or percentages and how do you spot those things? Well, notice all the bigger volume spikes. This is just a initial key for you. As you get better at chart reading, there's more things that play a role in this decision-making process. But you'll see that there's less volume that comes in 
as that stock is trying to break higher, less bullish volume. Then as we try to break this price level, there's less selling volume. You got buyers that step in. It's all about supply and demand, right? As we get up here, again, we get sellers stepping in, okay? We come back down into the price level here at about 175. You have a lot of sellers, but then buyers slowly step in real quick. We take it back up. And then what happens? Sellers pick it, step up again. So this happens a lot in many different stocks. If you look at Win, this one has had um, the same kind of concept. We have an ABCD pattern. If we take a look at this right here, you could see we have an A to B, B to C, and C to D. And then what does the stock do? It comes back almost to these price levels. Uh, it's almost to the lows of the C, but even lower. And then we base a bit and then the stock breaks out why well we have an overextension to the downside okay so after a while that volume builds and picks up okay so you have to think of it like a rubber band how far stretched are we and if you look more on the weekly basis you can see we create a lot of little abcd patterns right there and so when we have a sideways consolidation and then look at what happens to the volume. Initially, here, we have a lot of uh, bars and colors. If you look at it, which color do you see more right there? Well, it's more of a red color. However, as we start getting into this level, you can see the color, overall the color, is green. And we get a lot of green buyers stepping in. So that will push that stock higher. The more buyers, the more fuel that stock will have. And this happens in many companies and many stocks. So you can see the difference here as we look at the volume. Overall, we have a lot of buying volume. Let's just make it a little bit thicker. A lot of buying volume coming in right there. A drying up area or some selling pressure coming up here. So volume dries up in this level, which is kind of the peak over here in the stock. So then what happens when volume dries up? We get some selling action. Okay, so stock sells off. Then we continue to move higher. There's our B to C leg, okay, or C to D leg, actually. And this leg, you can see the volume really dries up. It's starting to really dry up. And once the volume really dries up and you get too far extended, which is over here, way overextended, what is it happens to the stock? It sells off. And then it takes time for that sell-off to reverse direction. Volume picks up. And then finally, after a lot of selling takes place and all these other people sold, you get this volume coming back in into the buy side. And that is simply because of the rubber band effect. And it happens in all stocks. If you look at Apple, the same thing happens. You got the ABCD patterns. Okay, so we have an A to B, B to C, C to D. And now we're trying to hang on to these levels. If it breaks, chances are it'll come down to the $50 level or somewhere around there. And look at the volume. It's drying up. Okay, so we've had a lot of inflow on volume with a few selling areas. Okay, but overall the volume has been drying up and we're getting some selling coming in. So if you start seeing more volume coming this way, especially on the sell side, you'll see that stock head a little bit lower to find a nice level where it becomes a value buy and then you could see it bounce and head higher again but that's what happens stocks get overextended to one side then you get a selling pressure coming in then they get oversold and then you'll get buying coming in as well so that's exactly what happened right here when you look at it on this b to c leg so you can see right there we have that um, a to b and then that B to C leg, because it was overextended at the B, just look at this price expansion to the upside. It's too far extended, then it'll come back, and then we can move higher. So the same thing, in or we have to come back in order to move higher. That's just the nature of price movements. So in general, you're looking for overextended moves, whether that's to the downside or the upside. If you understand what is real or realistic, you will have a better idea of knowing when a stock will pause or reverse. Remember that stocks break out, pause, retrace, and then move again, whether that's to the upside or the downside. 
looking at multiple time frames will help you with this. And you can also look at Bollinger Bands as well to help you dictate or see where things are overextended from one way to another place. So some final thoughts. Much of spotting price action simply takes time and practice. Um, it takes the time to look at more charts, find trends, and see if you can predict stock movements based on volume. Now, what I've done in order to help people practice these things is I've actually created my 245 money-making stock chart setups books, which really focus a lot on um, you know looking at charts specifically. And it's all books, just 95% of them are charts. It's not about reading. It's about reading the charts and looking and practicing practicing the charts, similar to how you're looking at charts right now on screen. It's going to share with you where to add, how to uh, look at resistance lines, support lines, and just looking at patterns. And the better you look at patterns, the more patterns you look at, the better you'll get at learning charts and reading those charts. It's just like learning how to read better. So the same thing with these books. That's what really what they're all about. So take a look at those books if you're interested to practice more about your technical analysis. Thanks for joining me in this video. If you want to see more questions and answers like this one, feel free to visit investinghelpdesk.com. And be sure to get on my newsletter list by clicking this button right here because when you're on it, you'll be able to get some free training. Sometimes I release free books and other uh, training material specifically for the newsletter members. If you want to get a free sample of my critical charts and try it for free, uh, there's a special link right here on this video by just clicking this button right here and you'll get that special special hidden link available and you can sign up and you get a free trial to the critical charts. And if you want to subscribe to YouTube, just hit the red button and you'll be subscribed to YouTube. Thanks again for joining me. Remember, do what you love, contribute to others, but most importantly, live life abundantly. I'll see you next time.